it is Monday, April 8th, 2024. Total solar eclipse day in Cleveland. It is 10 o'clock a.m. right now, 54 degrees. The total solar eclipse is a little over five hours away. We'll get the partial eclipse in about like four hours from now. But great to see the skies clearing up. Not supposed to have any rain, so things are looking good. I can't see anything out of these glasses right now, but uh, I wanted to put them on just for the cool portion of the video seeing it. I don't even know if the camera's looking at me. Hopefully it is. But I'm going to try to walk around. Well, I'm going to take these glasses off. I'm going to try to walk around and highlight a few uh, solar eclipse related things starting with Luna Bakery which is over there beyond the Sherwin Williams building construction I think they're selling some eclipse cookies and it's also the Guardian's home opener so we'll check that out uh, what type of desserts they're selling for that the NCAA Final Four in Cleveland just wrapped up the other day you can still see some of the tourists that are coming into town still checking out the decorations at public square but between that crowd getting ready to leave oh well, they're here for the final four they're probably staying for totality but you've got guardians fans coming up for a home opener you got what appears to be an increased police presence the hotels are probably packed it'll be definitely interesting to see how it looks a little bit later on I'm going to plan on doing a live stream starting at around 2 o'clock p.m. That's in right when the partial eclipse begins and totality I think is like 3.15. So I figured I'll be able to walk around and digest everything for a few minutes. At the base of the big Sherman Williams building construction project. Should be finished sometime in 2025. It's funny, I haven't walked that much further and the sun already came out a bit more. Uh, the Rockefeller building is where I'm walking the general direction of. I believe if I make a right hand turn up here at West 6th Street, that's where Luna Bakery is going to be. Yep. Here's where the sun is located right now. <laughs> Should check what direction it's gonna be located later on. Uh, Luna, you know what, maybe Luna's, where is it located? Is it at the next block? It might be the next block. Yeah, it's down at West 9th Street, so. Even though this is West 6th, West 9th is essentially for the, while you're on Superior, you're basically just walking one block further. And there it is right over there, Luna Bakery and Cafe. Hopefully they're not like sold out of their Eclipse and Guardian cookies. I think the actual entrance is down here. Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Oh, they're pretty packed. You can see they're running low on the Eclipse and baseball cookies. I got my Eclipse cookie and baseball cookie. Unfortunately, the selection was limited when I got in there. Oddly enough, I when I asked, like, oh, I'll take the Eclipse cookie, the worker up front was saying, like, uh, what, what cookie? And, was, and I was pointing, and she's like, oh, it was Sunflower? And I said, oh, is that a Sunflower? I thought it was the Eclipse. And she said, oh, that probably makes sense. It's the Eclipse. I'm pretty sure it is. When you look on their social media, this is what I was hoping to see, but I guess they're pretty much all sold out of them. See how they had, like, the Eclipse cookie that I got, but they also had like glasses and various other decorations and 
then I was hoping to see some of these too. They only had the one baseball left, but online they showed how they had the uniform cookies, home plate, hot dogs, pretzels. So unfortunately I didn't get to show that off. All right, ate one of the cookies. I'm gonna save the baseball cookie for later. And I'm gonna to try to head down to the Great Lakes Science Center area. They're supposed to be doing like an outdoor, free outdoor event related to the eclipse. So we'll see if that looks interesting. I think it's open already. Because uh, it's close to 11 o'clock a.m. now. Could be for other reasons, but... These pinwheels here, even if it is for another reason, the blue and gray make me feel like it's eclipse related. There's also some memorials here, so it could be tied to that. We're still headed down toward Cleveland Brown Stadium because the Great Lakes Science Center is that direction. So I'm on West Third right now. I passed two parking lots so far and each of them have said $50 parking and a few other lots said lots full so in just one hour's time the wind has already died down and it's getting up to about 60 degrees now i've got the road closed down here total eclipse fest at the great lakes science center so we just keep walking past cleveland brown stadium there is a security checkpoint up there Hopefully they don't say anything about my camera equipment, but I'm gonna put that away in my backpack uh, to get ready to go through the screening itself. We've got plenty of bathrooms set up. Cleveland Browns even busted out their cross-country mortgage 40-yard dash that they would have for like the NFL draft time. So they've got some food trucks, there's a map up here trying to show, so right now we're at uh, this spot right here, looks like you've got food trucks along this road, there's a NASA sign, NASA Village is 1 through 12, so that'll be focused on that, and then you've got some vendors down Erie Side Avenue. Browns have more of their stuff out. The Joe Thomas Hall of Fame thing. Browns, big sign. Little Cleveland Browns tent and then a football throwing station. You can see a bunch of seating for people to eat if they're doing the food trucks. So they've got the concert, little concert going on down there. NASA Village is supposed to be over there. And then the various vendor booths down this way. Part of NASA Village. They have specific exhibits like rovers and wheels that you can check out up close. I love this uh, NASA inflatable. They also have another NASA inflatable down that way. And there's some type of line that people are waiting for here too. Channel 5, other stations, I think that's 19 Action News down there as we approach toward the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. This part here is fenced off because that's the future expansion of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that they're gonna be working on.
April 5th to the 8th, yeah. So they were, again, hosting an event called Solar Fest. It says buy tickets here. We're not going there, but... Because there must be something special because usually it's free for like Northeast Ohio or Cuyahoga County residents. I forget which one. But even them, it said like it would be a $30 ticket if you wanted to go see it. And $35 ticket for everyone else. Right up. Oh, look, see? I'm overstocked here. He's overstocked. He's saying he's selling the Eclipse shirts for five bucks. <laughs> five bucks each. Overstocked right here. <laughs> five bucks not a bad not a bad deal considering most what well, you'd see at most t-shirt street vendors oh lots of people still making their way down toward the lakefront for the festivities I still think I'm gonna probably go to the Mall B or Mall C area when totality is happening later. Just because I think that'll be such a wide open lot that I'll be able to pan around and get a soak in a lot of the downtown Cleveland atmosphere. These ones must not be quite overstocked or not yet. T-shirts $15 or four for 50. Could definitely be hectic trying to walk later compounding everything with the guardians having their home opener those ones are a mix of brown shirts and eclipse shirts so i just finished experimenting with a vertical live stream from where i was by the Great Lakes Science Center and Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The sun is out bright, the weather is fantastic right now. And I'm gonna get ready to charge my devices, eat, grab a bite to eat for lunch, and work probably a couple hours, and then head back out for, I'm gonna be doing a two o'clock p.m. live stream. While I'm doing that live stream, if the connection holds up, I'll be like simultaneously filming vlog clips for this vlog that you're watching right now. So there might be some moments where you hear, you know, audio as if I'm like talking to a commenter. And that would be why, because I'm shooting, uh, there'll be a stretch where I'm shooting both on the live stream and this vlog at the same time. The reason you may ask like why are you doing both because the live stream connection even though it's fun to see it in real time as a viewer if you watch it back later on the quality of that is in my estimation oftentimes pretty crummy so at least with this camera i'll be able to you know have some users sharing on a phone who can't make it in person and see it live but then uh, i'll still be able to like document in history a high quality version of it with this camera See? Tons of solar glasses, CSU. So I picked up one of these at Cleveland State. Uh, this may actually be better because they're not glasses, but you can like, well, better for me because I'll be video recording with one hand, so getting the glasses on and off is a challenge. But I'll be able to put this up to my face. By the way, I've changed to my Cleveland, <laughs> Cleveland Guardians gear. I'll be able to put this up to my face and do the sun and that way be able to juggle both the camera and this at the same time. We're now walking past East 6th Street down Euclid, heading toward Public Square. And then once I get to Public Square, I'll try to do another viewing with the lens. And in addition to the lens, with this camera, I'm gonna try real quickly with my high quality camera because I'll be curious later on whether that picked it up or not. I have my doubts about it picking up through the lens. 
I'd rather try it out and see. See some people just enjoying late lunch as they gear up for the eclipse. East 4th Street, very busy. Maybe I should check out the vibe on East 4th for a second, should I? Hey, you know what? I want to save East 4th Street for later because I do plan on doing some videos uh, leading up to the, you know, after the Eclipse, but leading into the Guardians game. You can see people along Public Square trying to get a good shot. Looks like they're all angled up at Tower City, so they their choice of seeing the Eclipse is going to be when the sun is right behind Terminal Tower and Tower City. Oh, there's our walk sign. We have other people chilling along the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. getting their seat. They're gonna be installing the public square jersey barriers here starting tomorrow, supposedly but also they have the extra police presence housed there. Other people sitting along the square here. This is what I wish, <laughs> you know, it gives you vibes of like Bryant Park in New York City. This is what I wish Cleveland Public Square would be like on an everyday basis near the lunchtime hour or evening hour. Certain events you'll see crowds, but otherwise this is also kind of like a once in a lifetime thing to see so many people just relaxing in public square like this. See lots of people up on the elevated part of the square on the hill. Let's see if we can, I can see this through the solar lens, but I don't know if it'll pick up on this high camera. Eh, you can sort of see it through there, I think. So we're behind the Cleveland Public Library at the War Memorial Plaza now. You can see the number of people out. Empress Jones. Yeah, unfortunately, if you don't have glasses, just don't look toward the sun in any way. Again, if you're just looking strictly outside, meaning at how things look on the street or what your neighbor's house looks like across the street or your backyard, that's perfectly fine. But uh, if you are saying that you can see the sun, meaning up in the sky through your blinds, no, don't, don't even risk that. There's no nothing besides those designated ISO filters that are going to be deemed safe for direct sun 
view. Now over there across the street is Mall B, which is where I was wanting to view it. Now here, this might not be ideal to see it because the sun, I think, from this angle is actually now behind uh, Key Tower. But I think once you get over to Mall B on the grass, it'll be more open. There's an example of one of the parking rates being $60 for special event day. See people relaxing on the grass. Oftentimes in the evening you'll see people running around with their dogs, or having their dogs run around rather. that guy's reading. He's got his solar eclipse glasses on reading. Someone else has their eclipse glasses on and is using their phone. <laughs> Do these people have different eclipse glasses? Because the ones I'm using, once I put them on, it's like complete darkness unless you're looking directly into the sun. So I'm a little confused about that. I have some porta potties here people need to use it while they're waiting let's go ahead and walk up the stairs see it getting darker here about 17 minutes away from totality <laughs> let's see if we can capture it through the lens again Alright, it is 3 o'clock p.m. here. I am now switching to doing multiple videos at once. So I've got my live stream going here. And I'm also recording with this. The totality is supposed to begin in about 13 or 14 minutes. And we'll try our best to juggle both of these cameras at once. But for now, I'm going to try to continuously video capture with my high quality camera. Just in case something happens with my live stream. I don't want to miss it out. And by the way, for this vlog video, if you hear me narrating comments, like reading what people are saying or talking to viewers, that's because 
I'm reading their chat messages on my live stream. So just providing that context. <laughs> I actually don't want to give up this spot. This is one of those things where anytime it's crowded or a busy place, it's sometimes good to find like an anchor or a barrier. Because like if I stand right here, no one's behind me, no one's in front of me. And I still get the same view that everyone else is getting. Nothing's obstructing my vision. Although I probably could do another walk around. Marcus Robinson says that they live in California but own rental property in Cleveland so always watch the channel. Thanks, I appreciate it. Nice that you're tuning in from all the way across the coast and you have some investment in the city too. Unique LED products says hi from a former Clevelander in Northport, Florida. Yeah, I was, that's Another one of my motivations for a lot of the videos I do. Granted, I love when local who live here see it too, but I like when other people are watching it as well. Who are former residents or people who have never even been to the area. Or like the one viewer who said they were international when viewing it. Old Wolf says, be careful of the background music. You don't want to get dinged. Yeah, I do hear that music that someone's playing in the background. I'm hoping that it's low enough that the... Uh, video doesn't pick it up but we'll see I could at one point like in post processing once the video uploads if YouTube ever flags it as a copyright yes initially they would demonetize the video meaning uh, no monetization allowed on it I would have the ability to mute the audio during that time which isn't so bad, but the main downside to that is anytime you mute audio on a live stream, it removes the archive of the live comments that were made. And that's part of the fun of this, is seeing all your guys' comments as we're going along. David Wood says, hello, thanks for showing former Clevelander living in Boston, not seen here in decades. Welcome, David. Glad you're tuning in. So about 10 or 11 minutes now until totality. B. Prito 50 asks, what do you do for a living? My main work is IT related work and then I do a couple of side jobs. My one main side job that I've done uh, since 2006, I've contributed to a Cleveland Browns blog called Dogs by Nature and then this hobby, I call this a hobby video channel, Poco Traveler. So a combination of those three things. The dog is not barking at the eclipse. He's bark barking at the little friend that he saw walking by earlier. <laughs> Lisa says, I wonder if they should put glasses on the dog. Yeah, I've never thought about what to do with animals. I don't know if they're really going to be looking up during that time. B. 
few minutes away, I did notice my connection signal all of a sudden had another drop here. That's going to be the tricky thing again because right, right when totality is about to hit, you're going to have, you know, it's not like an influx of people are coming in the area, but what you're going to have is a lot of people are going to whip out their cell phones and try to upload content. So just keep those fingers crossed that we're still strong enough here. Only got a few minutes to go. Like I said, just a second ago, I uh, looked up with the lens and it seemed like the moon was covering the sun like 99%. I'm sure it's a little bit less than that. Old Wolf says, your signal seems to drop every time you put the filter in front of your camera lens. <laughs> well, that part, <laughs> that's funny that's, uh, that it happens when I do that. That part is purely coincidental. <coughs> the doggy's friend again. we're about four minutes away and remember once we hit totality it's going to be about a three and a half minute stretch of darkness it's amazing too how they can time all this up caffeinated misfit says probably not coincidental is a special filter <laughs> i don't know i can't imagine that this it's impacting the cell phone signal because even when I took it away, the signal was still, you know, inconsistent. It wasn't like, oh, well, I should clarify. Maybe something happens in your guys' end, but on the signal meter that I have, uh, it didn't seem to be related to that. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to test it one day for sure. I can do like an unlisted video. Definitely getting darker here. The guy there shouted out three minutes, trying to let everyone know. to 107 live viewers joining us. So thank you all for tuning in. It's ever so close right now. One bad thing about having a smartwatch, <laughs> trying to look down at the time and someone just texted me. There we go. Now, now the text message went away on my phone. So it is 3.11 and 34 seconds. crazy I feel like by the second I can feel like it just getting darker <laughs> like you can almost see the rapid acceleration of darkness I still can't remember if it's supposed to be 313 or 314 so we're about let's just say it generally like two minutes away And now what it looks like, 
from being here, it looks like there's a big flashlight in the sky. Like the sun is a huge flashlight and everything else besides the sun is becoming dark. Maybe I can peek up with the phone ever so slightly. <laughs> Am I going to do this against my better judgment? Yeah, Alright, that's as far as I'll go for without the lens. Jack says the exposure on your cam detracts a bit from the show. Yeah, I can definitely see that because this camera right here makes it seem like it's still daylight out. Look at that sky. Real quick, I gotta pull that lens out. So I'm gonna pause my high quality camera. Maybe I misread about this. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. I'm not advising people to do this, but like, did I misread? Are you supposed, to, maybe you're supposed to be able to take off your glasses when the eclipse is happening. But don't, don't do that on my accord. I'm trying to like very quickly peek up. Okay, Jack's saying yes you can take them off. So yeah, maybe that's my misconception that. I should have read about that ahead of time. I just kept on hearing everyone hammering about, like, oh, during the eclipse, like, don't take them off, don't take them off. So I guess the glasses are for leading up to the eclipse. Alright, but for the rest of this, I'll just let you guys enjoy the scenery. So I guess for that very three, three minute window when it was totality, you could look up. So this is not, if any other time in your life you'd see this, you'd think like, oh, you're videotaping at nighttime. Nope, this is three, about 3.15 p.m. in the day. In two hours from now, the Guardians are gonna kick off in bright sunlight. Sadie Lamp Duo asked, does Terminal Tower have a light show? I'm not sure. Oh, oh. sorry, excuse my language. I just saw the, I looked up and I saw the sun peeking out and I was like moving my eyes. So I wasn't looking at it. So now it's the point where it's not safe to look at it again. I'll have to watch back on my camera later on to see how it looks. 
uh, on these video streams, I have to imagine that there's no way it looked uh, as impressive on video as it did in person. I think it was one of those things where you definitely had to be out there looking at it. All right, now since we're we're still going to be in a partial eclipse, meaning this, you know, the moon slowly, <laughs> the moon slowly uh, faded over it, going one direction. Sorry, the moon faded over the sun, going one direction, reached totality, and now it's going to finish going the opposite direction for. I don't know if it's like an hour. And then we'll slowly be returning to full brightness. But I want to take advantage of walking around downtown Cleveland again. It's always nice to check things off the bucket list, so to speak. Not that I ever had, like, witnessing a total eclipse on my bucket list, but months ago when I heard or, you know, or last year sometime when I heard like oh a total eclipse is going to hit Cleveland and, you know, a rare event then all of a sudden my interest was peaked Head on back toward Public Square to see what the scene looks like there. You still have remnants of some people with their camera setups just relaxing near Public Square. Well, some of the crowd is dispersed. Don't get me wrong, there's a ton of visitors here, but I think one of my misconceptions is I think a lot of visitors, like not, when I think back to like the Cavs parade, for example, where you, you had like significantly more people downtown, that's because like the parade and championship, everyone was downtown for that specific reason. I think the visitors are more dispersed, like you may have had pockets of people at Edgewater Park or Lakewood Park or just visiting friends and family and seeing it from their house. Now walking down East 4th Street, some of the pregame crowd for the Cleveland Guardians home opener, which starts in an hour and 45 minutes. Guardians home opener. Some pregame festivities. Guardians. Gotta be careful of traffic. 
So how many people around here? Cars are trying to inch forward when they can. Being glued to their backs. Got the police bicycle unit. It's like another electric unicycle. This one got the Wonder Wonder Bread sponsorship <laughs> or Sunoco few sponsors. Trying to do a mix of killing time leading up to the Guardians home opener. But not just standing in the same spot like it was for decent portion leading up to the total eclipse. The grill going here smells good at Nicolos Caribbean catering. Fried gourmet fries, beardins, fries for five bucks. I, I don't do food trucks often, but some of this food is, smells pretty good. It makes sense that the food trucks are down here. Yeah, this was probably a jam packed place too, right by Lake Erie at. Uh, George Voinovich Park up ahead during the eclipse because they were supposed to, at least I thought they were, block traffic off in this area. Maybe they've since allowed it to resume. But I'm pretty sure they were supposed to be blocking traffic off. And judging by the number of people down this way, it was probably a popular spot. Oh man, that kettle corn. <laughs> I don't even eat kettle corn that much, but that smells really good too. See the police officers enjoying. I don't know if they're actually eating at M and D Tasty Creations, but <laughs> perishable goods. Thirteen asked for a battery check. We are at. Uh, 44% right now. I might, when I get down here, if the signal's still good, when I get down by, a, actually in George Voinovich Park, I might like sit down for a second and plug my portable battery pack into my phone. And for anyone wondering why I don't do that the entire time, have the battery plugged in. That's because the gimbal that the phone is attached to, the core, if I attach the cord, USB cord to it, it would be pulling on it the entire time and it would make the camera go like this, like dragging down. I mean, it's not a guarantee it would do that. Possibly could, I could get away with it if I position the camera a certain way, but in the past experience, oftentimes it'll do that. You can see a plane departing Burke Lakefront Airport. No, no, this is like that.
Yeah, this was no doubt. You can see all the cameras set up. I wouldn't be surprised if this might this might have been the busiest spot of all where people were positioned earlier. You do always get a nice view of the Cleveland skyline down here. They even had a portable first aid station. Yeah, that would have been nice to be surrounded by the water too here during totality. You can see the bridge that they constructed a year or two ago being lifted. Must be a ship passing by or a little boat. Let's see if I can find a shade tree. So I can charge my phone in the shade. Probably have a spot over here where I can do it. Before I do that though, let's take a quick look at the boat that's coming in that they're raising that thing for. Just a small boat. Cleveland Sailing Charters, I assume that's what it's for. All right, let's go ahead and camp out for a little bit. Oh no, they're gonna take my spot. <laughs> Okay, they're not. I thought they were headed for this. This is the spot I was eyeing. Let's see what this parking lot shows about 10 minutes before the game starts. This one's still 70. The one over there, like I said, dropped from 80 to 60 with the game getting close to starting and the eclipse already having been over. Here's something big, sir. 19 news again. I don't think they're live right now, but this is where they're camped out. This is why I waited and came back to see the longer lines before the Guardians officially begin their home schedule for the 2024 season. They're off to a very impressive start. Although, had that bad news of Shane Bieber, their ace, being Tommy John surgery. Oh, and our cell phone signal is getting weak down here. What's up, fella? <laughs> Giving out samples of Pepsi sugar, or free sugar. Yeah, this is what I was mentioning earlier. 
Oh look, Smuckers is also giving out freebies of Uncrustables. I'm gonna try one. I'll make sure I'm out of the way of people walking around. Yep, a few minutes before game time and then the lines of people trying to get into the stadium. Progressive Field. Oh, no, I dropped one of my crustables. <laughs> That will wrap up the vlog. I know the vlog portion might have felt a little disjointed. I was trying to just shoot as many clips as I could throughout the day that to encapsulate some high quality splicing of opening day plus the eclipse. Here's where you get that near view of home plate, actually a little further to the left with someone standing there. This is before the trees grow in. So if you enjoyed this video, this vlog of the day, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you next time. Signing off from outside of Progressive Field, the home opener for the Cleveland Guardians.